most of the time in the context of formation, we are in the position of giving, yeah. but not always in the posi position of receiving. So this one was really something uh, quite for me. Then after that, we moved in the level of small Christian community in the parish. Even there, it was really a great moment to listen to each other, to listen to the Christian, the expectation, the, want, the way they wanted also to be part of the church. So for me, I think this one was a very deep uh, experience and also in displacement. We, we put ourselves in the post of receiving also and learning, joining with, uh, with each other. Uh -huh. yes. Asante, so that was really wonderful. Tunafraia kwamba mliweza kusikizana kule kusikia wenzako na kule kujumuisha kila mmoja eh, katika hiyo experience yote. Thank you for that. Uh, George pengine utueleze experience yako ni kwa vipi eh, kama Mkristo na hasa eh, katika ofisi yenu ya Amesia ambayo unajua mlihusika zaidi katika huu mchakato wote. Eh, pengine utupatie experience kama mwanajumuiwa Saint Nicodemus ile ambayo ulimsema. <laughs> <laughs> na pia George wa Amesia unaona vile ambavyo mambo inaenda zile reports ambazo mmewasilisha kule ni nyinyi mnazipokea mkiziwasilisha hali ilikuwa vipi Ah uh, Kate allow me to start by saying that uh, hii synod ni synod ambayo imekuwa ya kipekee sana mm -hmm. kwa sababu gani hapo awali tumezoea kuwa synod ni synod ya ya maaskofu mm -hmm. hivyo kwamba tulikuwa tunatarajia kwamba uh, baba askofu wetu ambaye alikuwa by then uh, askofu wa nyolo akiwa na pengine wasaidizi wake na pia kardinali tulitarajia kwamba ndio wagehusika katika ile sinodi na ikawa vigumu kwetu sisi kama wa kristo tukijiuliza maswali kama sasa mimi uh, kama mkristo wa kawaida katika jumia ndogo dogo ya saint nicodemus mm -hmm. ni nao ujumbe upi wa kupatiana katika hii process ya sinodi mawazo yangu yata yatachangia kivipi and to be honest Kate, it was a very unique experience uh, right from the small christian community at uh, st peter the rock kino where i fellowship it, it was a beautiful experience that as we commune together with the universal church as we sought to speak and give our voices to, to the synodal process uh, we actually realize that we are members of, of that church by full right and therefore Kate to Kiangalia uh, and Kiangalia experience yangu kama mkristu katika parokia ya kino ikawa ni experience ambayo ilinipa wakati mwema sana ku, kushare maoni yangu kuhusu kanisa la kisinodi what do we expect the church to be? How do we expect the church to progress forward? And how do we include everybody in the life of the church? And again, coming back to, to the office, uh, I had a very unique uh, opportunity, Kate, because we had uh, an interesting program. Uh, we were calling it the Amesea Synodality Initiative. And this to Lifanya Kwa Pamoja Na akweka ambao wame, ametupa hii nafasi kuwa na weketi pia leo. Mm -hmm. And what that entailed, it entailed listening to all the member conferences. Wakati ambapo tulipatia na mawazo katika njumuya ndogo dogo, yaka katika parokia, katika dekania, katika national conference, yale mawazo yaka kusanyo, yaka, uh, yaka andikuwa vizuri kwa katika zile vipengele kumi, ya kiwemo mawazo yetu kutoka familia, na wakati alikusanywa katika national conference ya katuma wakati kama amesea na nikawa katika position ya muhimu sana kwa sababu nilikuwa na coordinate ile synodality initiative kwa katika amesea level na hivyo ya manisha kwamba zile reporti zote ambazo tulipata kutoka Kenya, Uganda Tanzania, Ethiopia Sudan na Sudan Kusini Zambia na Malawi nikawa nazipokea mimi kuzipitia zote kuangalia ni yapi wa, ambao wa Kristo wanasema katika hii haya mimejadala mikumi and we were able to synthesize all those reports into a 10 pager that we sent to to SECAM and therefore for me uh, I, I had a very personal engagement in the synodal process being able to discern being able to listen being able to put my voice into the entire process and therefore, 
kitu tukizungumza naye leo nitakwambia nimekuwa na a very personal engagement in the synodal process and i want to to note that uh, the, the issues that were of discussion were such critical issues for the church in Kenya for the church in Africa for the church in the entire world and we thank god for this thought of a synod that is slightly different from the synod of bishops that we are used to mm -hmm. a synod journey that brings together everybody to participate in the in the process thank you asante george kwa huo kule kutueleza kwa kina unajua mpendwa ni vizuri uweze kufahamu kwamba huu mchakato wote ulianza na vile ambavyo uliweza kushiriki kujaza zile questionnaires kuna nini ambao mm. Bernard alitueleza questionnaire mm. kwa Kiswahili <laughs> nikasahau yale yote ambayo uliweza ku, uh, kuweka pale iliweza kuangaziwa kwa kina vile ambavyo tunaelezwa na George zikaunganishwa zote zikawasilishwa na ndio maana tuko hapa kwa kukuhakikishia kwamba huu mchakato bado hujaisha bado tunakuhitaji wewe bado tunahitaji uzidi kuelewa zaidi nafasi yako na kule kukumbatia sinori kipekee kujumuisha kila mmoja na ndio maana tunaye mtawa Mahlin Mahlin kutoka kule Kongo na ambaye ni, ni mwanafunzi katika chuo kikuu cha Katoliki Eastern Africa kuweza kuangazia haya mambo Sister Mahlin pengine uweze kutueleza kuna hizi pillars za synod on synodality kule kusikiza kushirikiana mm -hmm. na kujumuisha kila mmoja kushirikiana na kushikamana pengine ndio tueleze kama mwanafunzi ambaye ana ana take theology una unashirikisha vipi these pillars in your daily lives pengine ukitangamana na wanafunzi wengine in your interactions unazi put into practice kivipi yes uh, i think um, just the way we are talking about uh, synodality synodality by its own is a spirit that we have to to integrate that spirit of knowing that we have to work together we have to join it together with others and listening being part of that uh, important element for me listening is first of all also to be involved psychologically with the person we are we are journeying with and this one was very good experience in the way that you learn to understand others to understand your colleague to understand other students to understand their stories i remember when i started my studying in theology up to now actually i'm the only lady <laughs> in my class you know i found myself with a priest you know from uh, vicar general somewhere for my you know for me somewhere so for me i was like uh, i'm just a, a small lady mm -hmm. among those big people what am i going to say what am i i have nothing to share actually it's happened that sometimes during group discussion they will share about their personal experience pastoral experience and for me i was like i have nothing to share <laughs> you know but they were the one telling me no sister just talk about your small experience maybe in the community maybe what you were doing with others with the youth and also this one helped me really to open up and to express myself knowing that i had i have some people who can listen to me without uh, being judged mm -hmm. without being that you are a lady you have nothing to say and also this one helped me to develop that sense of listening so i think that listening is very important uh, also in the context of our studies because we learn to listen to others approach people have other religious spiritual experience we learn to listen be without being judgmental and also we learn to Yes, to take a certain nuanced approach in our way of dealing with uh, theological issues, maybe with practical issues. And also another aspect, the one of discernment. Discernment also, it makes us to be more humble. <laughs> Before, because you think you know it all, you just give your idea without uh, considering others. But I think with discernment today, we are called to be more prayerful in our attitude, we are called to be humble to ask for others to ask when we don't understand to ask our colleague but also to ask our lecturers because they are also there to guide us and in everything to seek i i, I think the guidance of the holy spirit because we <laughs> we don't know we don't have all the answers but we have the experience of people that we we should respect and also in the level of for inclusivity I learned it from my own experience that we need to give space to others who can come with their point of view whether they are different 
maybe they can be hurting because you know from our background we come with our own way of understanding God with our own way of expressing our religious uh, experience so I think this one also it's helped us to to welcome all the voices to make people feel valued whatever you are a lady whether you are a sister among the priests also you feel that you, you have something to say you take your role you take your position so for me this one all, all those aspects has really helped me in my studies of theology today until today to be in the posture of listening welcoming and joining with others without uh, putting some limit thank you sister thank for you. that and thank you for sharing your personal experience and your personal position <laughs> that is really nice and msikilizaji vile ambavyo sister maclean anasema ya kwamba tukikumbatia hizi pillars za synod and synodality kwa kweli tunapata fursa nzuri ya kusikiza wenzetu ya kutafakari kwa kina vile ambavyo amesema sio tu kule ku dismiss manake kidogo mawazo yao hayendani na yetu kwa hivyo napenda hivyo sana na napenda the way you're saying that discernment calls for humility <laughs> sure. that is something ya yeah. asante haya george mm. nikija kwako kama nilivyokuwa nakusikiza vizuri ulisema ya kwamba uliweza kupokea the reports kutoka the amesia regions wewe mwenyewe ukaziweza kuziangazia na kuzikombine na kwa kweli kama hakuna huo tulivu na kule mpangilio kupanga mambo kunaweza kuwa na lot of confusion kwa hivyo pengine utueleze jinsi ambavyo uliweza kutumia these pillars of uh, synod on synodality kule kusikiza eh, kudi sana kuhakikisha kwamba hizi ripoti zote ambazo umepata zinapata kuwasilisha ina harmonious way hakuna huo mchanganyo hakuna mafarakano hakuna kule kuvuruga vuruga Uh, asante sana kit for that thought indeed the process that we used to compile what we are calling the regional synthesis was a very humbling experience one we were not meant to generate our own ideas and therefore in line with uh, Um, the, the, the pillars for, for the synod we were meant to, to listen to the voices of others expressed through the reports from the national conferences as we do that prayer free discern what is being said and what is not being said yeah. so that as I finally compile a sentence in the original synthesis I do not speak my own voice but rather that which the spirit of God has talked through the others mm -hmm. And therefore the first thing that you would do is that at the start of the mini sessions mini drafting and writing workshops that we had you'd always start by moments of silence tunasikiliza roho mungu akinena nasi kupitia yale maandiko ambayo tumepatiwa kutoka the national conferences tunawaza kila neno ambalo limeandikwa katika every sentence in that report mm -hmm. and we ask the holy spirit to help us interpret that and we use words that as uh, that represent truly what was being said and therefore uh, keep that process in through that process we did not add anything from our our own thinking we did not put in our voices because we had already given our voices through our small christian communities mm -hmm. at the level of omesia we had to be we had to give fidelity to the voices of the people as expressed in the national synthesis reports and and that basically meant uh, two things one the ability to carefully listen to the voice of the spirit through the the reports two the ability to interpret every word every sentence every full stop every comma used so that as you transfer views from Kenya Ethiopia Sudan eight countries you are not sharing your own thoughts but you are using the same same line of reasoning thinking philosophy spirituality as expressed in those uh, national conference reports And, and and that meant we we needed to be able to discern in there to be able to listen carefully we needed to be able to with all humility put aside our own views our own stereotypes our own perceptions 
and write that which has been expressed by the national conferences. Mm -hmm. And that in itself uh, taught, taught me personally the, the value of humility, like Sister has said, and the value of being true to the voices of the other people as expressed in national reports. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you, Kate, it is not easy. It's not. Most of the times, <laughs> the temptation is, I don't like this word. Uh -huh. I'm going to replace. I need to replace uh -huh. this word. I don't like this sentence. How we cannot be talking about one, two, three in a synodal report. But, Kate, the humility that, uh, humility required of us, and it, we were a team of lay people, we were a team of theologians, we were a team of biblicists, a team of uh, different uh, professionals, including communicators, and we would sharply differ over words, full stops and commas. But in all humility, we would reflect, we would prayerfully consider the voices of the national conference, and that is what we eventually put in our original synthesis and transmitted to, to SECAM for consideration. Wow. Thank you. Thank you, Judge, for that. Asante kwa hayo. Unajua ulipo sema uo ukimi ya nikakumuka. It is one of the major things that stood out katika the mchakato yote, hausa kule Roma, katika zile focus group discussion, wakati mwingine baada ya kuzungumza, manaitajika kunyamaza. Mesikie Rona ya nane na vipi, anawongoza vipi. Na kukweli bila mbavi ulisema joja siyo rahisi. Manake mara nyingi unajua, this synod and synodality is a new concept. Kule kusikiza. And you might say, kule kusikiza kizo kadhani ni kule tukusikiza lakini it takes a lot of effort kule kutaka kujua yule mwenzangu alikuwa anasema nini alikuwa anajaribu kumaanisha nini alipo nina hivi kwa hivyo msikilizaji yale hiyo tambo uliweza kuwasilisha haiku haiku kuwa concluded to just like that eh? haiku umebwa hivi hivi wacha niseme hivyo iliweza kuchunguzwa na kuangaziwa kwa kina na huo ujumbe ulifika jinsi ambavyo ulitaka ufike haiku kuwa neutralized haiku ongezewa chumvi vile ambavyo uli express ndi vile ambavyo ulifika tunakikishwa hivyo na George George Asante kwa hayo hai nikirudi kwa sister Marklin eh? Eh, sister unajua kuna this uh, notion ambayo uh, kwa kweli imefanya sinodo sinodo a stand out that general inclusion ku uh, kujumuisha kila mmoja katika huo mchakato mzima kumekuwa na hiyo dhana ya kwamba katika kanisa kuna wale ambao kidogo walikuwa wameachwa nyuma pengine utueleze mtazamo wako ni upi uh, ili kurekebisha hii hali jinsi ya ku welcome those who feel marginalized or have been left behind na kanisa ni kwa jinsi gani kumtazamo wako unaona tunaweza tukawakumbatia tena na kuwakaribisha Yes, Keta, I think what um, George has said, George just said, it is not always easy to convince everybody or maybe to fit also the expectation of everybody in the church, especially during this uh, synodal process. But personally, I'm convinced that the church has tried our best to reach out everybody, especially during this synodal process. When we when he's talking about uh, those questions were sent everywhere in different countries, in small Christian communities and everywhere, it was also to listen to those people, to our, our, our parishioners, our Christians, and also to yes to, to give them th that voice. So I think for, yes, even though you always find, as we are saying, some portion maybe which, who has been left out, maybe the church has forgotten. <laughs> I don't know if it is a proper word. But still we can, uh, yes, improve or not encourage hmm, some area. Like I was thinking about uh, a certain diversity in leadership, you know, leadership and act active roles of women in decision making in the church. Mm -hmm. This one is a challenge, mm -hmm. you know. We always feel that we are left out, especially in the instance of decision making, yes. And uh, many other things, you know, coming also from our culture as Africans, sometimes when we are working with men, we feel that they are taking <laughs> the whole place. Mm -hmm. And uh, for us women, we are, we are left just little. So I think this one is one of the aspects. Also, it is always there. We have uh, women who are very empowered in leadership and everything, but still we can work on that aspect. And also if we think about uh, the young people, for the young people, it will ever be, that question will ever be there. Because young people, they feel as if they are not listened to. And they feel that they are not understood. Or maybe their opinion are not always taken in account. I think for them, we, the church, 
the Christian family, the Christian community, we need also to work on that aspect by giving them a space for creativity, a space for self-expression. They can come with their own ideas in liturgy, why not? They can, they can come also with their own idea in pastoral. When we make pastoral planning, young people can propose, okay, for us in this area, we wish we can be part of the church by emphasizing on this aspect of our, of our being young. So I think all those aspects need to be taken into account. And today also I think about uh, the deaf. We have our brothers and sisters who are having disabilities in some level. How the church is trying to, to, to meet them, to be close to them, and to make them feel that they are also part of us. Though they have that infirmity, but I think in general level, there is also a need of formation. We need to form people to learn the sign of it. Deaf sign, deaf language, in order also to join our brothers and sisters who are, who are living in this condition and to help them. Another aspect also, the prisoners, they are maybe living somewhere in the, in the jail. They feel guilty, they feel left aside by the society, but how as a Christian, brothers and sisters, we can also be compassionate with our brothers and sisters without judging them, but all, all, also to make them feel that they pass their, maybe their mistake, but they are still part of us, we work together. So I think the church has tried our best, but still, still we are joining together. We need to really take into account those aspects and those new challenges that can raise along the road of synodality. Aha, uh -huh. thank you sister for that. So, so and Nikki Yakwa ko George no mba kwanza to chukwe from Ziko Fupi, na kisha to kwa na rigya manake pian gipe na kuskiya ko toka kwa ko kama mli vila mba vyo na hisi ya wamba wana hisi kidogo me chwa nyuma tu wakumbati ya vipi katika kule kushirikiana na katika kule ku musisha kila moja kwa future ya kanisa letu na kanisa la kisinodi. Mskilizaji tuna pumzika kidogo na to kwa tuna rigya katika makala haya tuna kwa ngaze kanisa la kisinodi mazu courtesy of Aqueca Association of Consecrated Women in Eastern and Central Africa. Unutegia Radio Womini, Temalina Nani, Nukta Tatu.
ambacho wanakipenda sana. Hivi basi tunaendelea na mazungumzo yetu kwenye Radio Womini awamu ya pili ya tafrija za heri njema ambapo tunazungumza naye Sister Marklin Angazali pamoja na George Thuku kutoka Amesea. Sister ni mwanafunzi wa theology kutoka University Catholic University of Eastern Africa. Hivi tulipokuwa tunaenda mapumzikoni George tumemmsikia Sister vile ambavyo ameweza kuangazia na hata kataja baadhi ya wale ambao kidogo kuna hiyo dhana kwamba wameachwa nyuma kidogo ama hawajakumbatiwa kabisa kwenye kanisa. Pengine utupe mtizamo wako unahisi yapi anaweza kafanywa ili kuhakikisha kwamba kila mmoja anakumbatiwa kwenye kanisa letu. Uh, thank you. Thank you Kate. I think for me I would take a different uh, trajectory from what sister has taken. I would look at children. How often do we listen to the children? And if so, how do we listen? Do we listen to children with a true listening ear? Or do we listen to children with preconceived ideas that children would want one, two, three? I want to share an experience that happened in Tanzania during the synodal process. That in one of the meetings, children were asked what is it that would be of concern to them in respect to participation. And innocently, a child says that we take time to prepare for a presentation, for a song, for a dance, because we have a big diocesan activity or national activity and children have been invited. But on the material day, the program starts, we get all speeches from the dignitaries, from the chief guests and all the, the, the high level people we, we normally involve. And towards the last few minutes, towards the end, either we do two things. We ask children who have been most of the time seated under scorching sun, we ask them for a few minutes of their song. And the child said that sometimes we actually say that because of time, we will not listen to them. Yet they have taken time to prepare, they have practiced, they have missed important things, they have missed play because of that. Yet on the material day, we do not seem to value their, their presentation. And, and get that shook our thinking that touched our minds. Because it, it was such a practical experience that children were sharing. And it never occurred to people that we actually deny children the right to expression in such forums. And therefore, as we think about uh, participation in this synodal process, participation in, our, in the life of the church, I consistently keep thinking about our children. How often do we listen to them? How often do we let them air their views? How often do we consider their, their input? There's a child who recently said that he likes a particular priest. And the child goes ahead to say that when this priest comes to celebrate Mass, this is the only priest who will stop facing the main congregation and faces us as children. You know, normally children sit somewhere on the wings of the church. Mm -hmm. our, our old churches mm -hmm. have, have a side wing yeah. where children normally sit. And this child says that that's the only priest who, who is able to face us and speak to us. And that child says that every time that priest comes from us, children feel they are part of the celebration. They feel part and parcel of the church. And, and therefore, for me, I would speak loudly to our leadership to our small Christian communities, to parents and families out there. Let us listen to the voices of children. They have an important part to play in the life of the church. Think about the youth. Every time you think about the youth, what do you think about? Singing, dancing, animating mass, liturgical dances, sports, such. And that is seen within the church and outside the church, even in terms of development. You that are always associated with dance, entertainment, sports. Yet, genuinely, the young people have a voice to give towards the life of the church. They have a particular role in the mission of the church. 
think about persons with disabilities, and Sister has already alluded to, to that. During the last uh, double ordinations that we got, uh, mm -hmm. last uh, two Saturdays ago, yeah. Yeah. Uh, where we had uh, Right Reverend Wallace and Simon Peter Kamomoe being ordained, ordained into the office of the auxiliary bishops, mm -hmm. there was a clip I took of two sisters who are interpreting for the deaf community who are attending that ordination ceremony. And I shared that on social media. And for me, that was a beautiful expression of inclusivity. Mm -hmm. That somewhere, somebody takes time to think, to plan for the inclusion of persons with disabilities in the mainstream liturgical celebration. And I think for me, that was such, actually, for me, I said that was the highlight for the entire celebration. Mm -hmm. And finally, Kate, listen to the voices of the people who are least likely to speak not because of any factors, not because of anything, but simply because they're introverted. The people who are in, in crowds, they, they don't speak. In, in families, they are silent. In, in our church, they are silent. They come, celebrate mass silently and leave. Yet, these people, most of the times, if given an opportunity, if probed a little bit, they have actually a wealth of experience to share. And therefore, thinking about inclusivity, my mind is drawn to a process that allows us to, with great humility, desire to listen with the ears of the heart. Mm -hmm. To the voices of the least of the people we expect to speak, to the voices of children, to the voices of young people, to the voices of persons with disabilities, and to the voices of those who are least likely to speak in, in a crowd setting. Because we already know that our structures provide for that. But of course, these structures without uh, the, the humanness of those who are behind the structures, they will, these people, their voices will always face certain blocks. They will not be listened. They will not be heard. Not because they do not have the structures, but because the people behind these structures are not attentive enough to listen to the voices of those who are excluded. Mm -hmm. And therefore, as we reflect together on communion, participation, and mission of the church, it is important that we listen to the voices of those we least listen to. Ordinarily, we listen to the voices of the leaders, we listen to the voices of the priests, we listen to the voices of the religious in a normal parish setup. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, or fortunately, this not a process calls for all of us to wear the heart, I mean the ears of the heart, as we listen to those who are like, least likely to be listened to. Thank you, Kate. Thank you. Thank you, George. That is so eye-opening. That is a that is a very genuine concern. Na vile ambavyo kila ambacho napenda ni kwamba kila ambacho umesema sote tumeshuhudia. Na pengine sisi wote ni victims tumeweza kuwakatiza tukawaambia mnajua muda umeisha. Lakini we don't take into consideration kwamba wame prepare mwezi nzima, wameweza ku sacrifice wakati wao kuweza kutuandalia hayo maonyesho. Kwa hivyo let us be considerate. We can always think about them. Hivi kwa sababu, kwa sababu munda kidogo naona unatupiga chenga, nigependa kuuliza hili swala la kule ku embrace teknolojia kisasa. Na vila ambavyo unajua COVID-19 ilipo kuja, iliweza kufungua another door ambawa tukujua it exists. Ya kwamba tuneza tukashiriki eh, katika mitandao bila kukua pamoja, lakini tuko pamoja. Ndono <laughs> kama ina, inatoka vizuri. Ya kwamba we are not together, but we are very together. Uh, pengine sister wezi kutuambilia kama kanisa la kisinodi kwenda mbele tunamizaje kukumbatia digital evangelization ili kwa kikisha hii hi mchakato inazidi kusonga na kanisa nzima linazidi kusonga Thank you Kate, I, I think the use of uh, means of communication, even digital platform today is not new in the practice of the church the church has been using those means even this is what we are doing now in Radio Waumini, Capuchin TV. I think it is really part of uh, that effort that the church has put in order to reach out a broader audience and to spread the good news. But again, in this uh, very moment of uh, synodal process, the church, with the church, even all of us, we are called really to use this mean in order to, to spread the good news, but also to, to make people understand, know, and really be, be part of this journey. And I think the first thing to do is really to, to train ourselves 
in using those means of communication, those platforms. Me, I think we take it for granted that all of us, we have, we have smartphone, we have on TikTok, WhatsApp, so we really know the meaning. But in a very particular way, as, as, as long as the teaching of the church is concerned, we need really to prepare pastoral agents, priests, religious, lay persons, who are really prepared enough and to use those means in order to, to spread the, the truth, the, con the real content on what the church is telling us to do. So for me, I think this one would be maybe the first aspect, but also another aspect to use effectively those platforms and it, as part of training to help our leaders, we call our leaders in the church, but also fami family members to be more positive about those media. You know, social media is not always evil. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think those are tools. Mm -hmm. All is about the way we use them, actually. If we put some negative things, negative contents, it will impact people negatively. But if we put positive image, positive quotation, it can also have a positive impact on people's life. So we, have, we are called to have a positive look at those media because Pope Francis is on Facebook, <laughs> is on Twitter, and also to use those platforms we have today like TikTok. Many young people are on TikTok. Mm -hmm. You know, when you take the feature of TikTok, maybe Instagram, video, music, and all uh, multimedia, I think we can use those features of uh, new technology of communication to spread to, to, to something about the church, something about the synodality. So that when somebody is on, on TikTok, it's not only about dancing, <laughs> jumping, or maybe going to some funny challenges there. But we can also help people to reflect about what is happening in the church. There are some decisions maybe on pastoral level, in the level of local church or universal church. So we, we have people who are trained to, to bring certain discussion on those social media. The church is talking about this aspect. How do we react? So I think this interactivity will make also people feel really part of the church, and it will foster a community building through social media, through virtual, virtual world. world. And so we have TikTok, we have uh, uh, Facebook, we have Instagram, and also on the level of the clergy, religious, we can use those social media for pastoral activities. We can use it to promote vocation. You know. Also, we can just use it to give a a visual on what the religious communities are doing. Because people might see sisters are in their convent, <laughs> we don't know what to do, but we use those platforms. So on the level of the church, as we are joining in the, the process of synodality, using those uh, platforms is also a way of updating Christian community about what is happening, and also to help them to be more interactive, and really to participate wherever they are. I think that is my Input. Thank you. Thank you, sister. George, you mm. have two minutes. <laughs> two minutes. <laughs> we actually All right. out of yeah. time, <laughs> but I still want to hear Vila Mbavyo na Dania Kanisa la Kisinodi, linaweza zilika tumia teknoloji na hasa mtanda wa kijami kwa kikisha mtakato huu una songa mbele na tunazidi kuinjilisha. Asante. Uh, allow me to, to note that technology is here with us. Borrowed, bought, imported, locally generated, we are not going backwards. We, we have to forge forward. And I think uh, as adults, my generation and maybe the older generation, they are thinking around technology, social media, mainstream media, is that largely we approach it with a lot of caution. But I want to, to note that for the younger generations, for our children, we have a generation that are born in, in an era of tech and therefore for them it is life as usual it is the norm it is a day-to-day -day living and the challenge that the church has is to make technology uh, mainstream and uh, social media part and parcel of our lifestyle so that our involvement our presence on media becomes a lifestyle becomes a way of life other than the exception it should be an exception for me to say that our church is not on social media. It should be the norm to say that my church has actively, has an active presence on one, two, three, four mainstream and social media sites and platforms. But even as we say that, 
we also have to be cautious that two things. One, there are dangers of being online, both for adults and young, uh, young people, children included. And we have to have mechanisms of making sure that our young children especially safely engage the use of social media. But for us as a church, we have to make sure that we are deliberate in creating content that is Christ-like, in creating content that inspires, that uplifts, that is solidly based on the Word of God. Because if you look at TikTok, Snapchat, uh, Be Real, LinkedIn, any social media platform, all those platforms, they, there's a lot of content generated by individuals for various reasons. For Some for entertainment, others as influencers, others seeking to get an income out of it. And there's almost zero regulation of, of the content. And there, this is where the church comes in. To be able to create and nurture a generation of young children who are morally founded, who are spiritually founded, and therefore, the content they create, because for them, that is a norm, the content they create is morally upright, scripturally uh, founded, and uplifting. That, for me, is where the church needs to, to act on, creating a generation of young influencers, a generation of young communicators who will post content online that promotes the spirituality that the Catholic Church believes in and values. And... <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Msikilizaji okay. ninge right. ningetamani sana tuzidishe haya mazungumzo lakini muda tumetupita tume tumeiba muda zingine za muktasari wa habari. E, kwa hivyo asanteni sana George na Sister Martin kwa kufika kwenye studio zetu na mazungumzo na kutupatia uhusiano na mawazo yenu mazuri sana na tumai ataweza kuendeleza huu mchakato wote. Msikilizaji tupatane katika wa miti ya tatu. Kani sala ki